When you start to get towards the end of your career, you, you start to wonder what you're going to do next. And, and for me, uh, my career was starting to head off in a, in a different direction in terms of, of curling uh, compared to where I'd been with, you know, down in, uh, down in Lockerbie with the family farm and things like that. So, um, you know, it just started to open my eyes to go, I actually really enjoy this. Up away. I'd been in that environment since a little kid. You know, my my mum, my dad, and my sister are part of being coaches and, and what what it takes to be a coach. So I was brought up with that, uh, you know, that real environment, even even at home, with regards to that. So it was something that felt quite a natural thing, you know, quite an easy thing for me just to communicate with a lot of people and and uh, you know be able to you know just try and offer that expertise and that mentality towards. You know, what does it take to actually achieve that goal or, and achieve the, the dream? I think you've just got to really enjoy what you do in any given time, right? I, I had such an incredible athlete career. Um, you know, such amazing moments with teammates, uh, amazing moments from the family, and, and you never forget those. <laughs> Young kids only dreaming of, you know, of one thing, and that was just, just trying to win a, win a world championship, try and chase the Olympic dream, all these things that when you're younger you never think you actually will so when you do achieve it it's it's hard to actually comprehend what you've what you've done and then once you've done it once you want more and then what does it take to get more now early into you know head coach career too you were trying to do the same thing you were trying to bring the best out of the the athletes you're working with and help them achieve the goals that um, you know, you were trying to do as an athlete too, and you understood it. For me, I really understood what it was like to, to want that and how to offer um, coaching to help that. So there was a real buzz that came from doing that. And I, was, I really, really enjoyed those, uh, you know, those five years of being a head coach and, you know, with British Curling. In terms of being an athlete, in terms of being a head coach and achieving um, the results that we had in Beijing, uh, possibly the programme that I uh, was part of with British Curling. Um, I think there's, there's an opportunity here for some change. I think that's what Canadian Curling is looking for. The project's exciting. I'm, I'm excited to uh, you know, just see what's possible. You know, there's just such a huge array of talent in this country and there's a huge amount of passionate curling fans here, huge amount of passionate curling uh, athletes here that really um, are all chasing that Olympic dream as well. Well, I mean, success is ultimately is ultimately medals, isn't it? For for the you know for the the top part, um, but we also have to remember just we, we want to grow the game here. Canada has certainly been the the benchmark. Um, and I think what the rest of the world did was they decided that they were going to do a lot more. They were going to do things that uh, maybe Canada wasn't doing. And up here, Christopher Sundgren sweeps it on to the yellow to score three. And Sweden will win gold at home here. In Canada, there's just so many, so many curlers and, and they probably have they adapted as quickly as the rest of the world. Maybe not. Some teams did, some teams didn't. Um, but I think there's also a point where you have to look at the sport and how much it's changed. Can one country actually dominate every single year now, considering how global the sport's got? There's been a lot of Canadian coaches work for Scotland, for, for Sweden, for, for China. So, um, it, you know, that's, that's within Canada that have done that. So, you know, is it time that that came about a different way. We've probably already saw it with some uh, some coaches coaching in Canada too, and and now there's a there's a Scottish high performance director. So um, I like to think that we just everyone keeps an open mind to that. I think it's it's not about 
some ways it's not about nationality, it's about you know, what you've come in here to bring, what you offer and, and how you're going to do the job.